Okay, I'm going to talk about this. What does all known, uh, kills all known germs dead actually mean? Other than the fact that it's a terrible phrase because you use the words kill and dead because they're hardly killing them to go to Disney World. So I'm going to talk about disinfectants because um, that's what my area of research goes into. And um, I have an alternative title for the slide, which is this. How do you stop children eating raw chicken off a chopping board, which is also a toilet seat? Uh, which is a homage to the ads because they want to scaremonger people where people are children are eating ice lollies and the mother's like, oh, what are you doing? Raw chicken has been touching that. But there is a point to this. This child likes doing it. <laughs> Firstly, you're an idiot. But secondly, the thing is, it doesn't always make you sick because sickness and being ill is actually a complex thing. It would make a child sick because their immune system is slightly naive. So sickness is our body's reaction to a pathogen, which is a disease-causing microorganism. Most of us have actually had the pathogen that causes pneumonia without having pneumonia. Our immune systems fought it off. The immune system, a healthy, being healthy is a balance between having germs and a proper immune system. If there's too many germs, you get sick and your immune system goes crazy, you get autoimmune conditions like lupus, house. Um, the immune system fights off potential threats and is always working mostly. There are exceptions to this in which the immune system is not working. We call those the, the people who are at most risk. This is the old, the young, the pregnant, and the immunocompromised. You probably will not have enough time to read this, but it's amazing. Um, it's basically <laughs> people... Let's read it. Um, <laughs> so this is what they, you know, people are kind of like talking about when they talk about people who are at risk. But on the bacteria side, you have the infectious dose, which is the amount of the pathogen required to intake in the host in order to cause an infection. Bacteria do not look like this. This number varies. It can vary between a million for E. coli, which is on the next slide, which I wish would change. A million for E. coli, down to E. coli 015H7, which is a very specific substrain of E. coli, which is exceedingly virulent, which is about 10. So what we are doing is battling between our immune system and the number of pathogens which are present. We can artificially reduce the amount of bacteria we come in contact with using disinfectants. Disinfectants are not, um, they're different from sanitizers and they don't sterilize everything. Sterilants get rid of everything. Disinfectants are very, very specific. What a disinfectant is, is a chemical or phys uh, physical agent used to destroy or irreversibly this thing. The thing that's important here <laughs> is spores and not all viruses. Because I'm going to cover what spores are next. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Anyway, spores are a very specific thing. They're resistant to disinfection. It's basically like having a fallout shelter for the bacteria. You know, they stay in there and everything's great and then they come out. Spores that you'd know are anthrax, but most commonly Clostridium difficile or C. diff, which causes very, very smelly diarrhea in hospitals and is very, very difficult to get rid of. So this is a general statement for what a disinfectant is meant to do. It's very, very complicated. It's a five log reduction of a bacteria in... Uh, Greater than five minutes, but less than 10 minutes, or a tree log uh, reduction, whatever, in 30 seconds. You don't need to know what this is. This is what the statement is. I'm actually going to explain it. So when you're doing testing, you start with a million organisms, which seems like a huge amount because it's seen as the worst possible case scenario. When we do testing, if we're doing a wet disinfection with uh, wet microorganisms, we do a million cells per milliliter of liquid, which is a lot. Well, it seems like a lot. And this is why. So if you're starting concentrations of a million cells, then ignore this because that's what the first thing is. But if it's a million cells, you should be able to achieve a 99.9% .9 reduction in 30 seconds, which is 1,000 cells left from that very, very high concentration of bacteria, and they shove this on the front of the packet, which is amazing. But sometimes these guys will actually explain what it is. A lot of time they don't. You can actually check the back and see what they've tested it on, because they will say, and they put up all these sexy bacteria and viruses that scare people, because people like to be scared. Movies. People do that in movies. Um, so this is like a list of what's uh, in or what they've tested against. And it says various things like no bleach, no taint, don't know what that is. Um, no odor and it's safe to use. I'm actually going to explain why they use these. E. coli is a toilet bacteria. If there's E. coli present, it's probably been near fecal matter. People haven't been washing their hands. If it's there, someone's not been washing their hands. Staph aureus is known as MRSA, which is the superbug. These guys are food poisoning. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is resistant to disinfectant. And influenza, everyone's afraid of dying. Um, so you have this which is toilet germs, and it says it kills 100%. For a fact, this is, probably does not kill the spores of Clostridium difficile. And look, it kills flu virus, as if that was an afterthought, because that people like. And then this is, I'm going to bring you back to the statement which I started off, which was kills all known germs dead. For me, as a microbiologist, this says it gives 100% kill for every bacteria, virus, fungus, or spore that's ever been found to cause disease. And we tested on all of them, every single one, which I find highly unlikely. Thank you.